Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. We have a picture of the pursuit. Sammy, hurry this up. He's going to kill somebody. We got him. We got him. They're down in the ditch. Look around. He's wrecked. He's wrecked. No matter where you are, at any second, it could happen to you. Because desperate criminals use desperate measures, no matter who gets in the way. For the next 60 minutes, you'll get a close-up view of what officers see every day. You'll ride shotgun in the most terrifying chases on the road. You'll feel the heat of the most explosive acts of criminal insanity ever captured on tape. Much of this footage has never been viewed by the public. Police and news agencies send us their most shocking video. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. So that you can know what they know. That to let your guard down, even for an instant, Get in and could mean disaster. He's gonna run the red light, he's gonna run it. So crank up your TV and don't turn away. Because real life happens in the blink of an eye. Shut your truck off. John Bunnell. I've been doing this for over 25 years, and every time I get in a police car, I realize the odds are always against the officer. We're in pursuit. But I've never seen an officer yet who didn't feel that with their training, their know-how, and the backup of other officers, these odds actually become pretty good. So hang on. We're going to show you how they do it, why they do it, and just how dangerous it really is. Harriman, Tennessee. After nearly being run off the road by this reckless driver, a citizen dials 911. Police are dispatched immediately. I got a possible 1049 drive of female Governor Brown owed. Apparently she is all over the road. The first officer to catch up is Sergeant Brian Farmer. And this will be a pursuit he'll never forget. In fact, it's his first chase ever. He is trained for this moment over and over. But no matter how many practice runs he's made, this is the real thing. The freewheeling bad girl charges right into the heart of this peaceful community. These down-home drivers have no idea they're about to become targets. The driver was going too fast down the town's main drag. When the surprise trucker hit the brakes, the suspect had no time to avoid him. But there may be another explanation for her slow reaction time. Alcohol down the floorboard. Yeah. It's barely noon, and this driver is already blind drunk. Fortunately, even though the woman hit the truck hard enough to flip it on its top, the truck's driver walks away without serious injuries. But police know that one or both of the drivers could have been killed, and that's a chance they're not giving the suspect again. This was a day of firsts for almost everyone. It was the officer's first chase. She's going into town or out of town. And it was the first time the truck owner had ever been in such a terrible accident. But it wasn't the suspect's first time driving drunk. So for the good of everyone on the road, at least for a while, it will be her last day behind the wheel. Los Angeles, California. Police are after a 19-year-old car thief who knows his way around the urban sprawl. Very little traffic out tonight. The streets are wide open, so we've seen speeds upwards of 90 miles per hour at times. The officers know that every turn offers a clever hoodlum hundreds of ways to disappear. 100, 100 miles per hour right now. 
Oh, it looks like he's got some sparks coming from his left side now. The stolen car takes a beating as the hood speeds through residential areas. Coming up on a red light here. He's going to go right through. Oh, he just bought him down on that dip. With only one front tire intact, the car becomes almost impossible to control. Oh, he almost hit someone pulling into a driveway there. Now the driver is just looking for a secluded spot where he can make a break for it on foot. Okay, he's slowing down for that red light. It looks like he's going to need to make a left turn. No, he's turning right into oncoming traffic. It's a good thing the traffic is light tonight. Then, the suspect has one close call too many. There's another unit blocking the road ahead. This guy's not slowing down. Wow, he's completely out of control. He just fished out slammed into another car. The officer barely avoids being T-boned as the car thief careens toward two parked cars. The force of impact is strong enough to shove both vehicles back 12 feet. For a moment, the suspect is trapped. Then he scrambles out through the sunroof and disappears into the night. Foot bail, he is out on foot. He, uh, we've lost him, he's just disappeared. We don't see where he went into the darkness there. It all appears the police have lost sight of him too. Officers race down the street with their flashlights, looking for a trace of the missing suspect. The LAPD chopper is making the standard orbit. They're shining their night sun around the area where they last see him. They've spotted movement. Barely perceptible in the darkness, the suspect dies for cover in a nearby backyard. There he is, that's him. Right under that tarp there. Do you see him moving? That was close, they almost missed him. The police is surrounded, now come out with your hands up. Finally, the elusive car thief realizes he's trapped. He crawls out into the cold night air and surrenders. The suspect has crawled out now and he is complying with police. No more hide and seek for this guy, he has had enough. Criminals naturally try to lose their pursuers in familiar territory, where they think they have the advantage. 100 miles per hour right now. But the officers have an advantage of their own. Strength in numbers. Tonight, this young car thief simply ran out of places to run. Jackson County, Georgia. Local, county, and state police are working together to stop a suspect behind the wheel of a two-ton pickup truck. Police believe the driver is under the influence of alcohol and seemingly unstoppable on the wide open road. The suspect fearlessly zigzags into oncoming lanes of traffic. Officers fear that they're up against a man with a fetish for danger. Well, he's trying to get people head on also right now. A cruiser parked in the center of the highway attempts to block the road, but the fugitive slips past with ease. We run the roadblock, PD. We're westbound still. Police stay close behind, waiting for an opportunity to get ahead of the suspect and force him to slow down. When the single lane turns into two, the officer suddenly gets some unexpected help. Walk him in here, walk him in. A slow moving van blocks the road ahead of the suspect. The fugitive is compelled to slow down, but he sees a way out and takes it. He's gotten across the road. The officer seizes the moment. Now on cemetery roads, the suspect can't get the speed he had on the highway. Another turn slows him to a crawl, and the officer moves into position for the final pit. Without his vehicle to hide behind, this bully is no match for police. Get out of the truck! Get out of the truck! This guy tried to use size. Speed. He's trying to get people head on also right now. And brute strength to outrun Jackson County's finest. But he failed to realize that he'd have to eventually slow down. With one turn of the wheel, he did. He's gotten across the road. And once on the narrow cemetery path, this fugitive didn't stand a ghost of a chance. Still to come on police videos. We're going the wrong way. The Outlaws. Oh my God.
who taunt law enforcement. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Just for kicks. Are you threatening the police officer? These are the crooks. Are you just playing games? Who beg for no mercy. This guy's getting really gutsy now. Plus, our nominees for best performance in a police drama. Don't let him do it again, please. Most criminals on the run think only in the moment without considering the full consequences of their actions. But some crooks seem to know the score all too well, and they can keep police guessing. Green County, Tennessee. A parole violator and his passenger are on the run. But this guy is well aware that his compact Mazda doesn't have the power of the Sheriff Patrol's customized cruiser. His only chance of getting away is to outmaneuver or outfox the officer behind him. The suspect makes a break for it down a backcountry dirt road. The fugitive nearly conceals himself in a cloak of dust, but it's not enough to give the officer the slip. I ain't going nowhere, but come on, let's go. Back on a straightaway, the suspect eases up. To the officer, it seems as though this guy is ready to stop. When the suspect sees three Tennessee State Police cruisers waiting for him at a roadblock, he kicks it into high gear. The crook just misses a rear-end collision with one of the squad cars. Before, he was only outsmarted. Now he's also outnumbered, with the state police hot on his tail. Desperate to try anything, the crook tears across the median, headlong into oncoming traffic. We're going the wrong way. Cars barely scrape by as the outlaw swims against the oncoming current of automobiles. But the move is too much for the outlaw to handle. He veers back onto the right side of the road. We're uh, now entering Johnson City. The suspect leads police into town intent on losing himself in congested midday traffic. The crook quickly turns into a residential neighborhood, where he leads police through a maze of S-curves and corner-cutting turns. This guy's getting really gutsy now. Uh, he's hanging his nerves a lot tighter. He swerves effortlessly past another roadblock and cuts through a red light onto a divided highway. A highway trooper assumes the primary position. With open road ahead of him, the suspect illogically reduces his speed to a crawl. If he slows, you know what to do. Police don't understand the sudden change of behavior. It may be out of sheer exhaustion, or he may be planning his next outrageous getaway scheme. They soon find out that the fleeting moment is just the calm before the storm. The suspect spots a trooper ahead, ready to throw out a spike strip. In a heartbeat, the suspect turns homicidal. In an unmistakably aggressive action, the fugitive aimed full throttle straight toward the officer. Luckily, the trooper jumped out of the way just in time. Now that the suspect has shown murderous intent, Police are instructed to stop him using whatever force is necessary. A state trooper pulls up behind the fugitive. The police cruiser moves into position, inching up on the suspect's right flank. Moments later, the opportunity arrives, and the officer makes it count. The driver makes a run for it. The police are on him in an instant. The passenger, a suspected accomplice, is also taken in. This criminal dared to take traffic head on. And even attempt vehicular manslaughter. But in the end, this parolee's efforts only gave him a trip back to where he came from the Tennessee State Penitentiary. You are going to jail now. In the majority of chases, people are running because they're scared. They want to get away. 
Even more dangerous than that, though, are people who are almost psychotic. They are in the chase for the thrill of it. They want to engage the police officer. They don't care if they get away, and they don't care if anybody gets hurt. Fairfax, South Carolina. At 2 in the morning, a Camaro driver revs his engine behind Deputy Sheriff C.J. Rule at a gas station. Rule runs the plates and learns the Camaro was stolen from a car dealer. Bombing pursuit. Clearly, this driver was just trying to goad the officer into a chase. Now he tears down the road at 100 miles an hour to lose him. But Roll won't let him off so easy. He tries to sandwich the crazed Camaro behind this 18-wheeler. The suspect barely squeezes through. The close call seems to take its toll and the thief slows down to signal a surrender. But when Deputy Roll stops alongside him, he learns it was just a trick. Now Roll knows for sure that this suspect is just out for kicks. He's just playing game. The driver's phony surrender has helped him get a huge lead. Suddenly, the impetuous prankster comes upon a raised train crossing. He barely slows down taking a major leap over the track and bottoming out on the other side. But Roll follows him right through, actually gaining ground on him. The suspect panics. He jams the brakes, then floors the gas to rattle the deputy. But this guy's in over his head. He never expected the officer to give him this much trouble. He attempts to lose Roll on a sharp turn. I'm going to run it off. But his detour takes him down a dark dirt road, which dead ends at a trailer park. The bandit tries to reverse course and loses control. That's when Deputy Roll makes his move. In a desperate maneuver, the bandit hits reverse and tears through the yard. Roll briefly loses sight of him in a cloud of dust. Then the suspect appears again, headed right for the cop. Roll pounds him to a stop and draws his gun. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! The crook finally realizes that this game is over. The suspect was found to have an outstanding warrant. And it turned out he'd led police on another chase just last year. It's not easy to nab a joy-riding jokester who's out for a thrill. Man, he's getting right, right? But Deputy Rule played along while the felon had his fun. And when the cop saw his chance, Rule made sure he was the one who got the last laugh. Coming up on police video. Oh my God! You've seen him once. We're gonna run you over. You've seen him twice. A long journey now. But these crooks keep coming back for more. Stay right where you are. The hunt is on for the criminals who have a talent. They're going up in the field on For breaking the law. Large trucks and SUVs are more popular today than ever before. But their image as safe vehicles can be very misleading, especially for a truck in the wrong driver's hands. Allen, Texas. Some people believe that being in a large vehicle is safer in an accident. But if a driver is intoxicated, a bigger vehicle is every bit as deadly as a small one. The driver of this pickup is drunk and feeling like he owns the road. I got a drunk driver on the east side of the The officer spotlights him, but the man just goes faster. He weaves wildly across three lanes. Although the highway is empty. Uh oh, he's gonna hit the guard rail. The drunk still manages to blow his left front tire. Now his truck handles like a wheelbarrow. But his booze-addled brain barely registers the difference. Before long, the driver completely loses control. 
crack out his wall. He crashes the full-size two-ton pickup head-on into the concrete divider. The impact jams the driver's side door. The suspect's too drunk to find another way out of the vehicle. The cracked fuel line spills gasoline all over, and the cab is filling with toxic smoke. The crash survivor doesn't realize he's being slowly suffocated. He even fights against the officers as they try to rescue him. Come on out, I don't want to drag you. Come on, I'm going to help you out. This going to take fire. The officers finally free him from the smoking hulk. Even now, their first concern is for his safety. You hurt him? You not hurt at all? He's so wasted, he doesn't know if he's hurt. He can't even remember his own name. You don't have a name. Are you Jeff? That's what shirt says. Jeff, you hurt somewhere? He's not feeling a thing, for now. But as the shock begins to wear off, he sobers up in a world of pain. Jeff, we got some help coming for you, okay, bud? This marauding drunk's big truck made him feel invincible. But he was completely unable to control his vehicle or get out of it once he had crashed. If it hadn't been for the officers, this drunk driver may have lived through the impact only to die in the aftermath. Wang Zhao, China. This pair of thieves has a simple MO. One drives while the other snatches a purse. With their nimble bike, they've successfully dodged police until today. These crooks have made an art out of blindsiding civilians. So these officers give them a taste of their own medicine. A plainclothes cop runs after the passenger, while a uniform officer arrests the driver. The freewheeling purse snapper doesn't get far before the cop nabs him. Police recover the goods, a businessman's briefcase. These crooks are caught red-handed. When hit and run robbers flee from police, they might find that police can run just as fast and hit twice as hard. And because these cops were willing to get tough, these bandits lost both their freedom and their motorcycle. Still to come on police videos. Are you threatening the police officer? Criminals who pack it up and head out of town. From border hopping for profit yeah, okay, please. to across county hall. Yeah, These crooks learn the hard way. Oh my god! But the grass is never greener. A warm in jail. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. When making an arrest, you never know what to expect. A suspect might be armed, he might be under the influence, and he might have accomplices. The smart thing to do is to expect the worst. Leesburg, Florida. Officer Brent Hales responded to a simple loitering call at a local shopping plaza. The suspect made off in this stolen moving van, and now Officer Hales is in hot pursuit of the fugitive. The outlaw swings wildly into oncoming lanes, barely able to control the lumbering behemoth. He'll run you over and stay away from him. Police aren't sure what may be in the back of the truck's cargo hold. They suspect the driver may be armed, and they know he's dangerous. Driving real radically. Just minutes into this hair-raising pursuit, the suspect careens toward an oncoming cruiser. He's made his intent clear. He's not giving up without a fight. The armed vagabond swerves violently, barely clipping a spike strip thrown by another officer. Terrified civilians watch as the fugitive blazes past, forging a path down the center divide of the city's main thoroughfare. An unmarked police van tries to force the truck off the road, but the suspect only ups the ante on pursuing officers by taking the bulky truck through an off-road detour and back onto a residential street. 
The unmarked police van tries a second time to stop the vehicle, but balks as the mammoth charges toward him full force. The suspect keeps on trucking right through a police barricade. Okay, they're coming up next to the roof. Coming up next to the roof. The suspect thinks he's in the clear, but he's just moments away from doing himself in. Trying to pass a stopped automobile, the suspect hops a curb, ripping his damaged tire open. Looks like the back tire is coming apart now. This is definitely not the type of use warranted by the rental agreement. Without tires, the truck slows to a crawl. The fugitive pulls into a vacant lot, where his stolen truck breaks down for good. This pursuit is over. Officers soon learned that the suspect had six prior suspensions on his record. They also found out what fueled his rampage, a double dose of ecstasy and a line of cocaine. Okay, they're coming up back to the road, coming up back to the road. Why the high-flying fugitive stole the moving truck is anyone's guess. Because where he's going, all the furniture is state issue. <laughs> When people get in trouble, they do one of three things. They deny, they make excuses, or they apologize. Stranger still is the person who tries to blame the police for the misfortune that they caused themselves and tries to get some benefit out of that misfortune. Smith County, Texas. When Officer Hudson and his partner pull over this driver for speeding and suspected DUI, they think it will be a routine stop. As they'll soon find out, it's anything but routine. The driver is a woman with her husband and children. She's had a few too many drinks, but gives Hudson no trouble. As a matter of fact, she confesses she's a wanted woman. And I'm gonna tell you, I have a warrant. For a warrant. Hot check. Officer Hudson knows his duty. He has to take her in. Come on back here. The wife may have been cooperative, but her husband is an entirely different story. He's tanked up on alcohol. You had anything to drink tonight? Yeah. And he's brewing for a fight. The belligerent boozer seems to have a grudge against the world. Are you threatening the police officer? I think you are. Put your hands on that car. The officers place him under arrest for being drunk and disorderly. Come on, Eric. When they put him in the back of the squad car with his wife, the man resists and has to be pushed inside. The officers then turn their attention to the couple's children and how to get them home. Fortunately, the man's sister was driving behind and has stopped to see what's happening. Hey, stop, then the situation becomes very bizarre. The husband commands his wife to hit him in the face. You poke right out in the face, right in the lip, in the lip. You're gonna make it feel hard. Now, in the lip, punch. In the lip, punch. I tried. While the officers and the sister make arrangements to get the kids home, the man works up his plan to fake a brutality charge against Officer Hudson. I want you to let out. The woman reaches her limit. She just can't bring herself to hit him hard enough. But he's becoming obsessive. Despite her reluctance to act, she shows no reluctance to cash in as they quickly go over the details of their story. Now look, we got a case to get you. He beat your to be on this damn door. Now I want some money. Oh, I, I, I want some money to it. You seen him do it, right? Yeah. When Officer Hudson returns, he's in for a surprise. Hey, Hudson. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what, baby. You oh. up when you bet my bum head on that door. You, you up. Look at my face, baby. What do you mean you broke your head? Yeah, you done it. You owe me. The couple are taken to the station, where the man is put in a holding cell. From this point on, you are going to be, you are going to be videoed both sides and sound. That man beat the hell out of me for no reason. I want him dirty now. From this that, point, get him away from me, man. Get him away from me. The amateur actor plays it to the hilt for the camera. Somebody, please help me. All right, all right. Don't let him do it again, please. And the theatrics continue 
right up until the final curtain. When Hudson made the arrest, he could never guess what the drunk had planned. Only when Hudson came to fill in his report and listen to the dash cam tape did he find the proof that he'd been set up. In this bizarre case of ironic justice, the suspect was charged and sent to jail. In addition to having already administered his own brutal punishment, on himself. Moments away on police videos. Very dangerous. It's all aboard on the Suspect Express. Okay, he's trying to run, on my ass. From illegal aliens. Uh, they're going up in the field, homie. To veteran cops. Oh, my God. Everyone gets taken for a ride. He's on foot. He's on foot. Next. People who carry illegal goods from one country to another are a dangerous breed. But no smuggler is as ruthless or as unforgiving as the coyote, an outlaw who exploits human cargo. Eagle Pass, Texas. Officer Alejandro Picasso is patrolling the wide open plains of this Mexican border town. The officer pulls a vehicle over for inspection. He knows there's a strong possibility it's carrying illegal aliens. OK, truck's getting over to the right, and I'm continuing behind the vehicle. But before the officer can put his theory to the test, OK, they're taking off. The driver peels away in a last-ditch attempt to keep himself in business. Picasso suspects that he's got a coyote on his hands, someone who is paid to smuggle illegal aliens into the United States. When a backup unit joins the pursuit, the van screeches to a halt. It's no surprise to the officers when the driver and his partner take off on foot. They're going up in the field, homie. The Border Patrol has its hands full with the passengers, seven illegal aliens. Yeah, that's it. Everybody's in custody. But the coyote they wanted gets away. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be uh, northbound on foot. So they're going to find out where they're <laughs> Another hot summer night, and Picasso's after another coyote. This time, it's a compact car, packed well beyond capacity with illegal immigrants. In a split second, the driver defiantly cuts across oncoming lanes, onto the opposite shoulder. Before the car even stops, the driver leaps out. Ignoring the barbs biting into his hands, he jumps the fence We're going. We're going. and disappears into the night. An officer follows the driver while Picasso searches the vehicle. What he finds is a brutal disregard for basic human dignity. The officer discovers not one, not two, but six terrified passengers inside the car. Hoping to maximize profits, the coyote stowed away twice the number of passengers this car was meant to hold. But that's not all. When Picasso goes to check the trunk, he discovers two more illegal aliens packed in and gasping for air. The officers have no choice but to take the immigrants into custody. But none of these people are the worst offenders. Officers want the coyote, and he's gotten clean away but they know he'll try again. And next time, he might not be so lucky. On yet another midday patrol, Officer Picasso follows a late model sedan through the rain. And pursuit of this vehicle cell phone right now. Before long, the driver makes a move that the Border Patrol has seen all too often. He's come running again. The driver takes off on foot leaving the passengers behind to delay officers while he makes his escape. He's on foot. He's on foot. He's bailed out. He's on foot. The officers effortlessly round up the group of passengers, but this time the coyote isn't going to slip away. An officer soon emerges from the brush. We got four suspects in custody. With two suspects in handcuffs, a husband and wife coyote team. 
These coyotes tried to sell the promise of prosperity to these desperate expatriates from Mexico. Okay, they're taking off. They know people are willing to pay the price for a better life in the United States. They're going, they're going, they're going. But when coyotes try to sell the promise of freedom to those who will risk it all, they're going up in the field on me. Police want the runners to know it's their own freedom that's on the line. Radnor, Pennsylvania. When Officer Gregory Mattioli stops a car for having no brake lights, his instincts tell him something's wrong. It's not the minor violation that arouses his suspicions. It's the driver's abundance of excuses. I went to get these fixed. <laughs> right? no, 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 listen. I went to get them fixed, right? And they keep popping off. Mattioli matches the man's cheerful approach, but proceeds by the book. Your first, your first name is? Michael Jacob. Do you have a driver's license, Mike? It, it expired, sir. Back in his cruiser, Mattioli runs a check on the name. Check Philly wants warrants on a Michael Jacob. Okay, negative operator's information, negative NCIC, and negative Philadelphia warrants. The suspect doesn't even exist in the police files. Fearing potential danger, dispatch deploys another unit. Mattioli could arrest the driver now, but decides to see what else he can get on these guys. You have any identification with you whatsoever? Only my paperwork. I'm a court this morning. Court. Mattioli's instincts were right. These guys have a history of trouble. When backup arrives, the officers begin working as a team. Mattioli interrogates the female passenger, while the other officer keeps an eye on the men. Do you have a driver's license, Cindy? I do have one, sir, but it's revoked right now. They're turning out to be quite a trio. Not a license among them, and one guy just out of court. The other officer spots something in the car. So she's got a big-ass pocketbook in the front. I know. I know. As Mattioli searches the woman's belongings, she blurts out an astounding confession. Uh, what do you have here? All right, there's a crack place in there. The situation has escalated from misdemeanors to a possible felony offense. With the cat out of the bag, Mattioli makes the arrest. Now you come back here with me. But the backup officer is about to get the surprise of his life. When Mattioli found the crack pipe, the driver knew the game was up. He punched the pedal, dragging the officer along the concrete like a rag doll. Mattioli jumps in his cruiser. Seeing the officer getting up and civilians rushing to help him, Mattioli chases after the perpetrators. Hey, car, search the officer! Search the officer! Sergeant Smith is down! The suspect rushes headlong into traffic, terrorizing frightened drivers. Mattioli can barely keep up. For a moment, he thinks he's lost them, but pedestrians point the way, and he's back on their tail. The officer arrives seconds after the suspects have crashed at an intersection. The passenger is pinned, but the driver flees on foot. Vehicle has crashed in foot pursuit. Mattioli chases him onto a nearby college campus and in seconds catches the suspect. I got him in the building. He's in custody. Going down, attempted murder. Mattioli had a gut instinct the suspects weren't who they said they were. And he was right. The driver was a career criminal with a staggering list of convictions. All three suspects were using false names and were detained on a variety of charges. The injured officer was taken to the trauma unit. Although he suffered lacerations, he fully recovered and was back on duty after a month. Coming up on Police Videos. Very dangerous. They call it the City of Angels, but this guy's no saint. Well, the patrol car is now moving in. A drugged up bandit. Oh, very close call. Tears up Tinseltown. It's lights. He is just asking for trouble. Cameras and action. Oh, he's losing control now. He's spinning up. Police spend months preparing for all types of criminals in every kind of situation. But when a criminal has drugs coursing through his system, 
All bets are off, and police have to play everything by ear. Los Angeles, California. A disoriented driver leads police on a perilous pursuit. He blazes down the street, pinballing madly all over the road. Well, they think this guy might be under the influence of drugs, so they're really worried about how this could end. At first, he was only wanted for a traffic violation. Now he can add a charge of evading arrest. Oh, he just blew right through that red light. It's clear the hopped up hoodlum has no fear of getting into an accident. When anyone gets in his way, he swerves into oncoming traffic. This guy just keeps going into opposing lanes here. It's very dangerous. Every car the suspect passes is a potential calamity. He barely squeezes past one vehicle after another. When he slows down to make a sharp turn, officers close in. Well, the patrol car is now moving in. It looks like police see an opportunity here. But the closer police get, the wilder the felon drives. So they keep their distance. Hoping to prevent an accident, cops block off a busy intersection, and the suspect sails through safely. But at the next crossing, the outlaw has a much closer call. He veers into the left lane to bypass a row of cars. Well, there's a lot of traffic down there. I'm not sure where he's going to go. And he narrowly navigates past the opposing traffic. Oh, back across the yellow line again. He is just asking for trouble. Then he approaches the winding streets of Hollywood, full of blind corners where no one can see him coming. Oh, very close call. A car just came within inches of sideswiping him. Police are anxious to move in. The criminal's next slip-up could be deadly. Finally, the tripped-out troublemaker's erratic driving catches up with him. Oh, he's losing control now. He's spinning out. Oh, he's right into the back of that car. Officers seize the moment and move in. Looks like he is giving up now. Uh, this chase may finally be over. The suspect surrenders without a struggle, and police learn just how wasted he is. As they take the man into custody, he's barely able to walk. Officers breathe a sigh of relief that this mind-altered menace to society is finally off the streets. Police did their best with a suspect who was clearly out of his senses. Well, they think this guy might be under the influence of drugs. At every juncture, they feared the worst. It's amazing that although the chase lasted 20 minutes, and despite the desperation of the dangerous lunatic they were after, the final crash was no more than a fender bender. If there's a lesson to be learned... They're really moving in on him now. ...from any felony or misdemeanor... Oh, my God! ...it's that crime doesn't pay. Get out of the truck! But some criminals are either too desperate... These guys are really gutsy now. ...too proud... He is just asking for trouble. ...or too stupid to get the message. So whether it's a senseless drunk behind the wheel... Or a repeat offender on yet another crime spree. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! The boys in blue will always be there to win the war on crime. <laughs>